Qantas and Virgin Australia are two of the most popular airlines in the entire country. So today, I'm going to be taking two flights and showing you everything that you need to know in order to find out which of the two is the best and the worst. Up first today, I'm going to be flying on Virgin Australia, and I have never flown them before, but some people say they're really good, and other people say they're really bad. Honestly, I have no idea what to expect, because this is my first time in Australia. But now that I'm here at the airport, I think it's time I head inside the terminal to check in and grab my boarding pass. I am super excited for today. Now that I was inside the airport, I found the Virgin Australia check-in area, which was entirely done by using these kiosk machines. After typing in my confirmation number, passing on an upgrade, and realizing we might have an issue, I was able to print out my boarding pass for today's first flight. All right, so check-in was super smooth and super easy. Getting the boarding pass was a complete breeze. It literally took two seconds. On some airlines, it is a whole process, but so far, Virgin Australia is off to a pretty solid start. But now there is one slight problem. I don't know if you guys noticed what there was on the check-in screen, but it said that a carry-on bag is only allowed to be seven kilograms. Unfortunately, I didn't know this, and my carry-on, I think, is 15 kilograms. So basically, double the weight you're allowed. I know on some airlines, they'll actually weigh your carry-ons before boarding, so fingers crossed that doesn't end up happening. But I think it's time we head through security, check the airport out a little bit, and then finally, it's gonna be time for our flight. And thankfully for me, since this is such a small airport, I was able to get through security in no time at all. Australia feels just like Europe in the sense that I never get Get double inspected when I go through security. Literally, when I'm in Canada or the US, every single time I go through, I get double searched, my bags get searched, and it's a whole pain. But luckily, here things actually went super smooth, so I'm gonna have to add a point to the tally there. And since there was still a bit of time before my flight, I decided to walk around, and I did end up finding a Virgin Australia lounge, which I didn't have access to because I'm only flying economy. So I decided to get myself a healthy meal before the flight, just in case that nothing was gonna be served on board. So now that I'm all done exploring and killing some time, I thought I'd take this chance to tell you guys a little bit more about Virgin Australia because I'm pretty sure the majority of you have never heard of them before or have never flown them. Right off the bat, they're rated a three and a half star airline with numerous awards and the reviews are generally super positive. People rave about good flights with lovely flight attendants, that they're a great value airline and that there is fantastic service. While on the other hand, some people complain about the tight leg room, many cancellations and one person even called them the worst airline. So now the reviews are pretty good even though there's definitely some questionable ones too. But now I think it's finally time we head to the gate and hopefully they don't end up checking my carry-on because it is still overweight. And now even though the flight was on time for today, unfortunately when I got into line I noticed there was a scale which they could tell me to use if they suspected that my bag is overweight. I have a bad feeling they're gonna make me weigh my bag and if they do we're screwed. Hello. Hi there, how are you? Good. You're all good to go. You're boarding from the back stairs. Thank you, appreciate that. Have a good one. I always get so lucky with the bags. 14 kilograms and we made it through. Time for the flight. Now since I was boarding from the back, I needed to make my way around the plane. And thankfully this time, I didn't get in any trouble for filming on the tarmac. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks, do you have your boarding pass? Yeah, it's just 26F. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you're on the right flight. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be bad. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Since I already boarded from the back of the plane, luckily I didn't have to go very far before making it to my seat for this first flight. Doing the initial comfort test, everything was actually surprisingly good, especially the headrest, which was extra comfy. And making my way to the armrest, I was happy to find that there was also a respectable amount of recline. In terms of the legroom, just like the review said earlier, it was definitely on the tighter side, and I'm only 5 foot 8. But at least underneath the seat and in the overhead bins had tons of room for any baggage. Alright, some initial thoughts. Right off the bat, the seat appears to be pretty comfortable. There is a ton of padding, the legroom isn't bad whatsoever, and unlike most airlines which use some sort of fabric, this one has some sort of a fake leather. I don't know exactly what the material is called, but it's pretty good. The headrest is also super padded, which is nice to see because most airlines it's nothing at all. And on top of that, there's also pretty good recline too. Now as for the negatives, this plane in particular is extremely dirty. Pretty much everywhere I look there's dirt, there's stuff on the walls, and it's kind of disgusting if I'm being completely honest. And another thing is that this seat doesn't have any in-flight entertainment. There's no screen on the back of the seat, which kind of sucks, but there still might be digital entertainment on board because there is still so much more that I need to explore. So I think I'm going to do that right now. With the seat I was in, I had access to one full-size window, which is always nice. And making my way to the overhead, I was happy to find that both the reading lamp and AC were both working. Checking out the seat some more, in place of the in-flight entertainment is where I could find things like the safety pamphlet, which is especially important since Boeings enjoy crashing or falling apart lately. And also a page on how to connect to the Wi-Fi, which I'll be doing once we're in the air because right on time we had begun pushing back from the gate. For the first of two flights, I was going to be flying about an hour and a half from the Gold Coast to Sydney and after getting to the runway, it was time for takeoff. Now 
that we were in the air, it was time to connect to the Wi-Fi network and also Surfshark VPN. For anyone who didn't already know, if you connect to any airline's Wi-Fi, they have full access to what you do. And using something like Surfshark VPN helps protect you and your data against this. Now, as you can see, I was still able to browse through all of the different movies and TV shows offered on the in-flight entertainment portal. But did you know that Surfshark can do a bunch more too? Using their VPN, it could actually allow you to book cheaper flights and also stream your favorite shows in other countries, which is especially helpful for me when I'm doing all of this travel, and it will definitely come in handy on your next vacation. Using my discount code Struke or by clicking the link in the description, you can get an exclusive deal, which gives you three extra free months, and there is absolutely no risk in trying Surfshark, since there is a 30-day money-back guarantee. But now, as I was finishing up with the online portal, I noticed the meal service starting. Looking through the menu, there were tons of different options offered during the flight, but sadly, they were all only for purchase. Taking out my tray table, I was happy to find that it was quite large, with a stronger pillow game than most dudes. But just like the earlier messes, it was extremely dirty, and I ended up just getting myself a cup of water. Since this is such a short flight, we're actually already halfway through, so I thought I'd go ahead and share my mid-flight thoughts. Right off the bat, I never comment on this, but I think I have to. The flight attendants are absolute dimes. Normally on all the North American airlines, it's just like old people, and you're like, eh. But here, they are very pretty. Now as for the seat, it's actually pretty comfortable, because normally by this point in the flight, my back would be hurting, but surprisingly, this time I'm actually good to go. Now earlier when we were on the ground, I wasn't sure if they had the in-flight entertainment or not because there was nothing on the back of the seat, but it turns out they did. When it came to the in-flight service, everything you pretty much had to pay for, the only thing that was complimentary was water. But besides that, the flight has been really good so far. And remember, once we land, I'm going to be flying on Qantas to see which of the two airlines is actually better. But before we get to that, I still need to do the loo review. Compared to my seat, which was dirty, this bathroom is actually extremely clean with all of the usuals and a really good amount of room, which is always nice. But what I did find strange was that there was a bin for needles, which I have never seen on a plane before, but anyways. After making it back to my seat, we had begun our descent into Sydney, and now it was time for the Qantas flight, so we could find out which of the two airlines is the best and the worst. Now that I'm done the first flight on Virgin Australia, it's time for me to fly Qantas to see which of the two is actually better. But this morning, I tried doing my check-in for my Qantas flight and it didn't end up working because it's an international flight. So it's time to head inside the airport to check in properly and grab our boarding pass. Now that I was upstairs, I made my way to the Qantas check-in area done on these kiosks, but after putting in my passport, I got this weird air code saying that I needed assistance. Excuse me, just as I need your help. Are you traveling on ETA? Uh, ZETA or something like that. Yeah, so do you have a confirmed return or onward ticket? Yeah, to, uh, back to North America. Yeah, can I see a copy of that? Carry on. Thank you. And now, all I needed to do was confirm my seat, and then I was all checked in, but for some reason, it didn't print a boarding pass. All right, so thankfully I was able to check in, but I wasn't able to get my boarding pass, so I just ended up using it on their mobile app. For some reason, the staff member was extremely rude to me. I don't know if it's just because it's first thing in the morning or what, but she had a ton of attitude. And it's because I literally didn't know that I had to show my onward flight to even go to New Zealand. So it took me like five minutes to try and find the booking, and I don't think she was very happy about that. But at least for this flight, I do have a window seat, which is awesome. And now that we have our boarding pass, it's time to head through security. Which normally I'd expect to be incredibly busy considering this was an international flight. So I was definitely surprised when I got through to the other side in record time. All right, well, security went super quick. Considering I'm taking an international flight, I thought it was going to take way longer, but it was only about five minutes. And on top of that, I didn't get double inspected, which is super rare. So I'm gonna have to add a point to the tally there. But now that I am in the main terminal, apparently there's supposed to be some American Express and Centurion Lounge. So I'm gonna head there and check it out. And then afterwards, it's finally gonna be time for our flight. And thankfully, the lounge wasn't a far walk away. So it's time to see what was in store for us. Inside, there was a decent amount of room for seating to work or even areas to just sit and relax. And on top of that, this lounge also had showers. But now, how was the food? Well, for that, there was a decent selection of yogurts, salads, fruits, cheese, meats and crackers, baked potatoes, bacon, and eggs, along with cereals and different kinds of toast. As for the drinks, there was an entire open bar along with different areas for apple or orange juice. So I loaded up and the breakfast was pretty solid. So overall, I'd have to say the lounge was actually pretty decent. For Centurion Lounge, it was definitely on the smaller side. When it came to the food, the options were also super limited, but the lounge itself was super modern and all of the staff were extremely friendly. Overall, I'd have to give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. But anyways, now that boarding is supposed to start in about 15 minutes, I should probably mention something important. So recently in December, Qantas banned filming 
on their planes, meaning no social media, no phones, and no cameras recording. Pretty much what this means is that the flight attendants can ask me to stop filming at any point, and considering I am filming on this massive camera, it's pretty obvious. And according to the reviews, they don't actually really enforce it unless something bad happens. And speaking of reviews, for everyone who doesn't know what Qantas is or have never flown them before, I'm gonna read you some of them just so you can understand what this is gonna be like. According to TripAdvisor, they're rated three and a half stars with numerous awards. And as for the customer reviews, the majority are excellent or very good, but there is also some poor and terrible ones too. On one hand, you have people saying that they are nothing like they used to be, that they're often delayed with peg issues and bad service, and one upset customer even decided to say they were the worst airline. But on the other hand, people raved about the great service, saying their journey was beyond excellent, and that once again, Qantas is the best airline in the sky. So now just like Virgin Australia, some of them are really good, some of them are mediocre, and some of them are bad. But it is now finally time to board, so let's find out which of these two airlines are actually better. And thankfully for me, I didn't have to walk very far in order to find my gate, but once I got there, it was time for some bad news. Turns out the flight has been delayed about 20 minutes because the inbound flight was late getting here, so now they still have to disembark that plane, they have to put food on it, so we're pushed back about 15 minutes, but I feel like it's gonna be longer. It's gonna be interesting to see how long this flight's delayed. And so far, we were 36 minutes past the boarding time, but soon enough, they let us get into line. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. So when I was scanning my boarding pass, I saw her write my seat number onto a piece of paper. I'm not sure if that's because I'm recording or what that is. She didn't do it for anyone else. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Because who knows, maybe they're gonna end up telling me that I'm not allowed to film. But after a bus ride to the other side of the airport, it was time to board the Qantas flight. Hello. 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 Thank you, welcome board. Appreciate that, thank you. Making my way through the cabin, this time I was near the back yet again, but eventually I made it to my seat for the second flight. Doing the comfort test, I was super impressed because despite being a cheaper material, things felt just as comfy as the earlier flight, if not better. Checking out my armrest, it was pretty beefy, along with a button to recline, which ended up going further back than on the earlier flight, which is gonna have to be a point for Qantas. In terms of the legroom, I'd say it was pretty much the same as Virgin Australia, since things were pretty tight, and underneath the seat, there was a pretty solid amount of room for storing any bags. Alright, so some initial thoughts. Right off the bat, the seat is super comfy. The legroom isn't bad, it's a little tight being only 5 foot 8, but the fact that it reclines more than makes up for it. In terms of comfort, I'm going to say this one's a little bit better, but we still have to see throughout the flight. But unfortunately, just like I predicted when they said we would be boarded by 9.45, it's currently 10 o'clock. We're still only halfway boarded, so who knows when we're going to end up departing. And on top of that, I still don't know why they wrote down my seat number, so we're going to have to wait and see what that means. But before then, I decided to check out everything that was in the seat pouch. Up first was another safety pamphlet for the Boeing, which we'll definitely be needing since they have a habit of building defense effective planes. There was also a pair of over-ear headphones for the entertainment system, along with a Qantas magazine. Making my way to the overhead, there was a bunch of room in the bins for baggage, and I was also happy to see that the reading lamp and AC were working without any issues. But then I did notice a possible problem. Another thing that I just realized, which is kind of funny, is it says this flight is from Sydney to Wellington. I'm supposed to be going to Queenstown, so hopefully I don't go to the wrong place. And since we began pushing back from the gate, I guess we're just sending it. For the second flight, I'm supposed to be flying from Sydney to Queenstown, New Zealand, and after getting to the runway, it was time for takeoff. So now that we're in the air, I think it's time to check out the in-flight entertainment. On the side of the TV, there was a USB port for charging devices, along with a mini remote on the armrest for changing shows or the volume. And speaking of shows, I was happy to find there was a huge selection, along with a ton of different movies too, which is always great to see. But the only downside was that the screen could be quite a bit laggy. Checking out the Wi-Fi, I was pumped to see that it was completely free, and also pretty fast, which is better than Virgin Australia, which didn't have anything on the route that I took. Anyways, at this point in the flight, I noticed that the crew was coming around for the in-flight service, so I took out my tray table, which was cleaner and larger than version Australia, before being served a full three-course meal along with a mini bottle of wine. So now that there's only about 25 minutes until landing, I thought I'd go ahead and share my final thoughts. Overall, I'd have to say Qantas is amazing. The seat was super comfortable the entire time. My back is not sore whatsoever, which is super rare considering normally at this point in the flight, my back is hurting. Compared to Virgin Australia, the seats are pretty similar, but I'm gonna have to give the edge to Qantas because it's just unreal. And same for a lot of the other areas. For example, the in-flight entertainment. Qantas has a full screen, it has tons of stuff, and if you wanna use your own device, there's an option for that too. While on Virgin Australia, there was really only the in-flight entertainment on your phone, and it was super buggy. Now when it 
it came to the in-flight dining service, the one on Qantas is also way better. On Virgin Australia, we only got a glass of water, but here we got wine, water, an entire meal, snacks, and even chocolate. But now the one big downside to Qantas so far is that there was that massive delay by about 45 minutes, which really sucks considering Virgin was on time. But like I said, there's still about 20 minutes left in this flight and a few other things that I still need to check out. So I'm going to be doing that right now. And of course, that means it's time for the loo review, but unfortunately, one of the bathrooms were out of service. Despite this, the one bathroom being used by everyone in economy was a decent size and surprisingly clean, which is always a great thing to see. And after getting back to my seat, we had begun our descent into Queenstown before coming in for landing. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to watch this one next and subscribe for more.